Could a monkey survive FNAF 1? Actually, no, that's not a completely honest question. These are monkeys with magic abilities, tanks, and bills to pay, so they decided to start working at a minimum wage security job. Bloons is hosted in a 100% realistic world where you don't get an infinite amount of lives to learn how to deal with Freddy Fazbear. So the only thing that these heroes will be able to rely on is their adaptability and their insane hacks. But we'll also have to limit their hacks a little to make this video actually interesting. Starting with rule 1, no damaging the animatronics. If an animatronic gets to your office, well, you're dead. If I were to count animatronic damage, this list would just turn into an anime power scaling video. So, we're not counting that. Also, rule 2, no destroying the pizzeria. What? First we have Quincy. Quincy would probably not take it seriously and get a jaw imprint on the side of his head. He'd probably end up going, are you kidding me? Nothing gets past my door. And then would get broken like a Kit Kat bar. Plus, since fast things are his weakness, proven by his injuries from a DDT, Foxy would most likely get him even after just one attempt. I don't see him surviving past night 2 or 3. I have no idea about Gwen's age. Some people have said she's 18, and some have even said that she's 6. But since she's young and her whole entire strategy comes down to burning things, she'd either recreate the Bite of 87 or recreate the FNAF 3 ending. Either way, she's getting fired. D tier. Not only is Striker Jones a commander, thus making him more used to strategizing, he also has another trick up his sleeve, that being his stun, which we could slow down- That being said, Freddy Fudd Ducker loves to play tricks on people who enter his lair, and I don't know if Bubble Rapper Sniffer 6000 would be able to adapt very easily. So, he'll go in A tier. Oban has one thing that makes him an instant S tier. His wall of trees. No, he can't trap the animatronics or else that would count as animatronic damage. But the trees could potentially block off the hallway, making it so that he wouldn't have to deal with Freddy or Chica at all. Seeing as he only had to learn half of the game, I think he'd be able to easily avoid being snacked on like he's a piece of celery. Seeing as Corvus goes to a dark magic club with Azili, I don't think he'd necessarily be fearful of these animatronics. That being said though, that's really the only distinct upside that he has from the others. It's questionable if the spirit would be able to actually help him out by closing doors or communicating with Corvus since there's nothing suggesting that it could do either of those in the game or in the lore. Not to mention he also wouldn't have any mana, not that it would matter if he did though because all of his spells either attack, don't do anything to help, or just light the place on fire. It is said that he made his own spell book and taught himself how to use it, and while that may make him seem like a good learner, that still took a very long time to do. And Fickle Fanbark isn't going to give you a year to learn how to survive. Unless that book has a how to be ready for Freddy guide in it, most of his abilities would just be useless. I'll put him in B tier though because I think he'd be serious about the job and isn't stupid. Now I'm going to give you a 2 from 1 really quick and tell you that Captain Churchill and Admiral Brickle would be in A tier for the exact same reason. No, they don't have their vehicles, not that it would matter to Brickle unless she wants to sail the 7 seas of a ball pit. But in their fields of work, just like Stryker, they both need a lot of strategy. That being said, they don't really have any noteworthy hacks necessarily, so they'll just sit comfortably on the A tier. Hopefully Churchill will be able to reach the buttons without needing a step stool. Benjamin works with computers so much that he's probably going to turn into one at some point. I have no doubts that he'd be pretty proficient on the security cameras along with the fact that he's really used to working at night and staying up really late. This would be a great job for him. And with the amount of work he does on that computer, he could probably take on 50-20 mode on Ultimate Custom Night and still come out on top, let alone the first 5 nights of FNAF 1. There's no way any of Fret B's strategies could overwhelm him. S tier. Izili is in kind of the same boat as Corvus in that she doesn't really have any distinct upsides, but I mean, I feel like she'd take it seriously and wouldn't be scared of the place or anything. I don't know, just slap her in B tier and move on. The only thing stopping Fandy from getting this guy is the fact that I don't think he'd even be able to fit in one of those suits when Freddy stuffs him. Notice how I said when, because Fat Pusty is not the fastest car on the highway. AKA, his IQ is so low that it hits the floor and splats all over the ground. I'm pretty sure he'd just die on night one. The only thing noteworthy about Adora is that she can probably light up the hallways with her light attacks without using power. And while yes she uses the power of the sun, there's no evidence that it would actually light the place on fire. Even if it doesn't though, there's the chance that she might accidentally hit the animatronics while lighting up the halls, thus disqualifying her. So this technique wouldn't really be a wise choice to use a good amount. So unless she can perfectly time all of her attacks to not hit any of the animatronics, she's probably only gonna make it to night 4 or 5. Not only is Eddie in really proficient in using cameras from his drones, 
but you could also set up moving drones around the pizzeria to keep even better tabs on the animatronics. Or you could also just use his UCAV to mark all the animatronics, which can also work in buildings like the pizzeria. Yes, it is confirmed that he takes things less seriously than the other heroes, but with an advantage like that, he'd have to get hit with a sleep grenade in order to actually lose S tier. Not only is Sai really intelligent, but he's also a toddler, which is noteworthy because I found things saying that the animatronics aren't hostile towards children, but I can't find an official source giving me a yes or no. Plus, the FNAF movie suggests that even if they aren't necessarily hostile towards them, they still want to stuff them in an animatronic suit. Even then though, with all the other stuff going for him, I really don't see him getting stuffed anyway. S tier. Sada may be really fast, but that doesn't matter when your only way of survival is a door. No doubt that by night 2 she'd quickly be dissembled like a Lego building and then sent away in an Amazon package. C tier. Alright, I hope you're ready. I've saved the most broken character for last. Just to start, Super Glue can permanently slow down the animatronics since they wouldn't be able to step on it enough to get rid of it in one night, rendering them permanently slowed down. Along with the creepy idols he could place, and while the animatronics themselves probably can't feel fear, remember that there are also children's souls in those animatronics that can not potentially feel fear, so it could probably end up actually working, at least for a time. Another thing that's questionable though is his Campbell potions. We don't really know exactly how they work. From what it looks like with the eyes above the head, it looks like some sort of night vision, but I can't really confirm that, so yeah. But the main thing that makes him so broken is his rejuve potion being able to recharge things, like power. And while it may seem like a stretch to say that he'd be able to do that, in the game, it's able to regenerate other electricity powered abilities such as the anti-balloon or the ultra boost. So he could just use these twice and then keep the doors permanently closed, and I doubt that he wouldn't at least be decent at strategy. I mean, he is a merchant, and if in order to make a living off of selling products, you need strategy. Simply put, Geraldo is more stacked than the Royal Palace and has a security measures that are just as secure as it too. Easiest S tier on the list. You know, in hindsight, it's clear that some heroes in the roster are better suited for popping balloons rather than being a night guard. Isn't that right, Quincy? Yeah, still dead. Anyway, thank you all for watching. Please like and subscribe as it really does help me make these videos for you all, and I'll see you all later. Bye bye!